I'm Julie Chelfont, current chair of the Finance Committee, and I'm calling the Finance Committee meeting of Thursday, September 2nd to order at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, our first Item on the agenda is to review and approve previous minutes. Um, does anybody have a there we get a copy? Nope. No. I, no. I emailed out a copy. Right, you emailed the copy uh, out. I reviewed them and uh, I I'll move the minutes of I believe it's July thirteenth meeting of the finance. July thirteenth it is the July thirteenth meeting. We have a second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Well, do we need, since all the members are here, do we need to do a roll call vote? Do a roll call vote, just to be vote. careful. All right. Um, okay, so with no discussion, we will go ahead and vote. John Peresky? Aye. Jim Canby? Aye. John Turk? Aye. Julie Chalfin? Aye. Allie Van Allie Van Jeff Upton? Aye. All right, so that's it. Five zero one. That um, passes. Okay. Next on the agenda is electing positions for the upcoming year. So we need a chair, a vice chair. Is that what we call it? Vice chair. Oh, but I skip. People want second chair. What's that? Want second chair? Okay. That one's kind of low. <laughs> motion we appoint Julie Chalfont as chairman. I'll second that because she's done a great job this past year. No politics now. <laughs> Macking up. <laughs> I need to. It's bad, I, acts in order. I would be happy enough to do it. I would be happy enough if somebody else wanted to do it. Um, You're doing a great job, like thanks. John said. Well. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Roll call vote. Aye. John Pereski, aye. Aye. Jim Gambius. Hi, John Couture. Hi, Julie Chalfin. Hi, Allie Vandervelden. Hi, Skip Olmsted. Hi, Jeff Upton. All right, that passes. Zero. Um, we need a, is it vice chair? Is that what we call the position? Yes. Assistant yes. chair. Vice, <laughs> chair or vice? I don't think we're talking Who had it last year? John had it last year. Okay, I move that John do it again this year. He's already experienced. We need experienced <laughs> leadership. I'll second that. Good with that? Okay with that. Any discussion? All right, we'll call vote. Do I vote? My, do I say aye to myself? Aye. Yes, you do. John Pereski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Pachurk. Julie Chelfin, aye. Ali Vandervelden, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. All right, so that carries 700. Um, clerk, is that the position? Yeah, and I. I'm not it. <laughs> you unvolunteered, I huh? I cannot do it this year again. Oh, anybody willing to take on? I type fast. Do you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can write it for a little. We might get yeah. really creative minutes, though. It's properly spelled. <laughs> no, no okay. offense. No, you, you don't need to be properly spelled. <laughs> Anything is good. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. I'll move uh, Jim Cambius. Second. All right, any discussion? Oh, roll call vote. Aye, John Pereski. Aye, Jim Cambius. Aye, John Pachurk. Aye, Julie Chelfin. Aye, Allie Vandervelden. Aye, Skip Homestead. Aye, Jeff Upton. All right, that carries, 7-0-0. We already voted our personnel committee thing last meeting, right? Yes. For that. Um, how about CIPC? Do we need to re-vote that? Uh, yes. We do. Are you willing to do it again, Jeff? <laughs> We're looking at you. Yeah. I couldn't even ask. Right? Jeff always does a great job, so I'll nominate Jeff. I'll second. <laughs> he does if job. nobody else is interested, we are already done. In it, second. I will second. do it. He would love it if we would keep doing it. That'd be great. Thank you, Chris and Elf. We'll have taken CIPC. Okay. All right. Um, Julie Chalfin, aye. Aye, Jim Cambius. Aye, Julie Chalfin. John Peresky, aye. Jim Cambius, aye. John Pachurk, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Ali Vanderbilt, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Great. So Jeff, that passed 7-0-0. Um, 
Those are all the positions, right? Any other positions we need no. to? That's, that's, that's it. it. Okay, that's what I thought. All right. Please next, I've oh, lost my agenda. Next on the agenda is reviewing the end of FY20 reports. Um, Brenda emailed them all out to us a few days ago. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions or comments on anything that was sent out to us? And just just a correction on that, it's FY21. Oh, what did I put? FY21. Yeah. 20. yeah, you're right, FY21. <laughs> yeah. How time flies. <coughs> yes. When you're having fun. Why do we have so much money in data processing? There are almost $80,000 in there that's not being spent, that's being encumbered. Uh, that is mostly uh, PEG access capital that's um, specified for their purposes. I think they're going to start using some of that this fiscal year. Uh, I believe Casey uh, has been working with them to get some equipment upgraded uh, there in town hall. Okay. I don't see much encumbered on this next year. Is there a reason for that? Because she won't uh, let me. Right. Uh, you know, we try to keep that to a minimum as much as possible. The carry forwards, um, the school didn't carry forward anything except for the generator because they have funds to finish some of that stuff themselves. Um, and as far as encumbering funds, we did encumber some money for uh, the, um, open space committee for the new rec plan. We did encumber some money for the server for town hall. And we encumbered, oh, Casey, help me out. What was the other thing we encumbered money for? Um, legal. That's we had out for, for legal, for, for ongoing um, uh, negotiations for the, um, the new CBA with the highway department, as well as uh, some of the ongoing litigation um, things that, that we have going on. I, I can't, oh, go ahead. What was that? No, it's ongoing litigation for land use and collective bargaining. Got it. The elementary school really turned over $82,000 to us. Um, I've never seen them do that before in all the years I've been they didn't turn over $82,000 to us. Um, I'm trying to think of how you got that picture. Um, there was like $411 that they didn't spend from their encumbered funds last year. And I let that go, but they did encumber everything else uh, to spend. And they've already spent more than half of it. This report that I'm reading says elementary school, line 300, says carried forward 2,156 bucks from last year. The original budget, 4,800,000. Spended 4.7. Unencumbered balance says 82,789.24. Yeah, I think it's the way that the entry is made to encumber those funds that it makes it look like it hasn't been spent and it's not going to, but it is going to. It's, it's just the way the system makes it look. What about the vocational score? Are they not encumbering any funds either? Because they're turning back $4,800? Um, the vocational score. Was it a decrease in transportation, Brenda? Oh, that's it. Yes, it was. It, well, no, it was the out of district placement. Right. That, the transportation for the student to go to Smith Volk didn't cost as much as we had allocated for it. Thanks, Thanks Casey. Good try. I try. <laughs> and Highway is uh, turning back 119,000 plus. Uh, I believe. I believe so. Okay.
That means we should have a real good free cash figure for this coming fall. Well, it'll be okay. It's not it's not great, um, but it's it's within what we usually have. I'm figuring about a million one ninety. Um, DOR did contact me yesterday and said that they they were ready to work on our free cash, but when I told them that we didn't have the money yet for the MVP grants. They said that they didn't think they could work on our free cash until we had the money in hand. So um, I think we're at a standstill right now, but once we get that money, um, free cash should be about a million one ninety. Got one more question on uh, celebrations. According to this, we expended twelve thousand dollars on celebrations. Yeah, so we had a ten thousand dollar allocation for the three hundred and fiftieth, and that went into a special revenue fund. And that stays there until they spend that. And then there's 2000 that gets spent every year on the uh, Memorial Day, Veterans Day um, activities. So this 12,000 has not been spent, it just got whisked over to another account. 10,000 of it is, is in a, an, an account to be spent for the 350th, yes. Thanks. One question I got on tower rental, utility tower rental. Is that the accurate figure that we're getting now, 44,000 for tower rental up on uh, an old Deerfield? That's correct. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to see that. I remember negotiating with them when we were getting 1,800 bucks a year. Oh my. I told them that it's time to get us back <laughs> up where, a to a case of well, reality. And they I- said, Well, what do you want? So oh, I go told ahead. them what I wanted. I wanted 50% of their revenues because that's what they do in most other states. And uh, they said, well, I don't like that. What if I don't like it? I said, it's simple. I said, I'll go back to the report of selection meeting. And I tell them you don't want to negotiate. And I'll make a motion that we authorize a contract to tell you to get off your tower and within 30 days. Because we have a 30-day automatic renewable lease. Well, guess what? They sold the tower to Western Mass Electric Company within 30 days. And the guy called, not the guy, the girl that called me and said, what do you want? I want 50%. And they came back and says, we'll give you the 50%, but can we save money for just repairing the road because people keep ripping up the road? And I said, that's fine. Well, that started off closer to 22 or 25,000. I'm glad to see it's up to 44. Mm. I think uh, that was last negotiated by Wendy, and I want to say that was at least four years ago. We might be due uh, to renegotiate that again soon. I, I just don't know for sure. Casey, that might be something you want to check on. You know who? The negotiation um, for the tower rental. There's an automatic cost provision in there, I think, of 3% per year increase so if you can negotiate more than that that's great but if not you're going to get at least a three percent i got one question on your covid 19 cares svrf are there any restrictions on that on the cares money yeah that we've already spent no, it says an ending balance of 65,000. Um, what report are you looking at, John? I'm looking at the statement of change in fund balance. The last okay. thing you sent out. So the uh, 57,000, seven something. 65. Oh, the, cares, the CARES money, correct. Okay, so, so that is money that is still available to be spent um for things that that are eligible for the cares cares program and casey probably is more familiar with what's eligible and what isn't um but i know that one of the projects she was still thinking about is um, putting our permits online um well, we have a couple of things we're working on yeah okay online permitting um we still haven't gotten our our first project from FEMA approved. So 
there's so there's money that's out there that we're waiting to see if FEMA will approve because it changes the balance in that account. Um, we may have other electronic equipment we need to buy to help with sound and stuff because this isn't going away. This remote participation isn't going away. So, so far as we can tell right now, anyway. Um, there are some restrictions on how you use the money. It's mainly intended for the emergency response that allows us to communicate and provide, um, what do they call that? Masks and stuff. PPE. PPE. Sorry, it just flew out of my head. Um, so things like that. So it does have some restrictions and we do have, we're finishing up a quote process for the inspections, the permitting software, because there were some questions we had and we had to refresh that quote. So we had to find out whether FEMA was gonna give us the money because we had almost spent it down and FEMA finally gave us some money, but they haven't given us the other project that we've requested. And we still have an outstanding vaccination, right, Brenda? The, the vaccination costs have not been uh, reimbursed, but FEMA has not reimbursed anything yet. They have indicated that they are most likely going to give us what is showing on that report, but uh, we have not seen the money in our hands at this point. What's the difference between that and the ARPA funds? ARP is a completely different pot of money. So ARPA is a... Are both of those federal funds or... They are both federal funds, yeah. And they, so they do have some restrictions and limitations in different areas. ARPA is narrow to some extent, but... Freer than clear, than the uh, care status. Right. Freer than the team. All right, that's all I got. Have we received the ARPA funds yet? We've received... Two so two payments of two separate um, fund. What the easiest way to describe it is two separate funding sources to the town. Um, there's going to be two tranches of payout, and we have until 2024 to utilize the money. Yeah. So so at this at this point in time, we've received about a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And is that in this report? Somewhere, or is no, that... um, as of June 30th, we received 262,000, and that is in the report. Uh, but since then, we received another 484 something. And you said we're expecting two further. We'll, we'll get, yeah, that was they sent 50% directly to the town, mm -hmm. and then they sent 50% to the county government. And because we don't have a county government, it took a while to kind of. Come back I around. saw that just the yeah. other day. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be another hole. That and so you get two tranches for each one of those funding sources, so to speak. So this is the first one. We'll get another one next year. A year. A year. It's got to be a, a year, year later. Now. Oh, okay. Anybody else have any questions on the? Yeah. Revenue. I have some questions, Brenda. Okay. Um, Christy. Um, original budget amount, what we use when we look at what we plan to spend, we subtract what we expect to receive, and the difference is raised through taxation. Is that the money we see when we're reviewing the year-end report for budgeting purposes? Fifteen uh, million. So the fifteen million is our original budget, which includes the taxes and the um, local receipts and the state aid, um, and any transfers from any other funds that we have. So out of that fifteen million six eighty five, we actually received sixteen million one forty. So in this case, we received four hundred and fifty five thousand more than what we had budgeted for. And we had done a very conservative budget this year. So yes, we're, we're down on revenues a little bit from what we would have been if, if COVID hadn't hit. Um, but overall, um, it still is a, a decent picture. What are elderly abatements? I know as a veteran, I get $400 abated off my real estate taxes. And I, you know, I don't know how that's figured or how that comes through the state, but that is one of those things that comes from the state on the cherry sheet. 
Um, I don't know if anybody can explain it. I certainly have not looked into how we get that that money. I think what you have to do is talk to the assessor's office because the elderly can turn around and apply for tax relief and they do it through the assessors. Okay. So it's an assessor issue that goes to the state. The state takes a cumulative and then sends the information down to us. With 20,000 under on that, on that line item. And we, and we get a portion of that back, John, or just all of it back? No, you're not, the veterans benefits, you get 75% back. From the state? From the state. But the elderly that you're talking about is a different category of funds. Right. Oh, yeah. And but that, that also comes from the state? That, that one, as far as I know, comes from the state, and that should be in a reimbursement. I think what happens is the assessors probably gave the abatement, and they're waiting for the state to return the money to us. Mm -hmm. That's why you've got a negative figure of minus 20000 in there. Well, the, the state, you know, the state provides an estimate. The cherry sheet is really just an estimate. You know, some of the numbers are, are uh, hard coded, like the chapter 70 money is always a, always a definite number and the, and the unrestricted government aid is always a, a definite number. But the, the things like um, charter tuition reimbursement and the elderly abatements is all based on actuals. And so the state doesn't have an actual number um, so they give you an estimate, and then as the year goes, then they they give you what what the actual number is, and that could be more or it could be less. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Good for me. Anybody else? No. All right. Thank you. Let's do that. Okay. Next up is warrant for the special town meeting. Um, there's an updated copy that was handed out this evening. <coughs> and I guess we'll just start at the beginning and go through article by article and see how we do. Do we have to make a? Do we have to vote on each one? I think we should vote on each one, and then we'll just like we do for the regular town meeting. Um, He's going to print a couple more warrants. Oh, one for Skip and Anna Lee. We don't have article numbers. We don't have article numbers, and I think that's on purpose because they aren't sure the order that it's they all move around. And finally, but um, we're after yeah, say the title of the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. We start. That's good. I'll make a motion to approve the article for the unanticipated fiscal year 2020 bill. Second. Great. Okay. Need discussion. So this was for the. Um, there's a professor from Western New England University who provided pro bono labor to um, administer the survey that the Town Building Advisory Committee did. Um, the agreement at the time was that the town would pay for postage. So this bill is just the postage piece of that survey that was done by the Town Building Advisory Committee. Um, and the bill didn't come in until after the fiscal year was done, so that's why it's on here. Did that go to every resident? Because I don't remember it getting did. one. It did. It was close to two years ago and it went out. It was fall of 2019. Sounds um, right. Yeah. And it was, quite, the questions were, it was about buildings and space and um, talked about, had a bunch of different ideas for the different buildings like, and proposals and you're supposed to vote on whether you agreed with it or didn't agree with it or whatever. There was no funding. There were no dollar values associated with that. It did go out to every house in town. They got the list of addresses from the town hall. Any other discussion? It's just two. These, it is noted here, but this note on the bottom refers, I believe, to all of these. <clears throat> it's an old, these are so-called old bills. They require Nine tenths vote. Uh, also, we're taking it for free cash. 
hopefully uh, we have certified free cash before town meeting. Otherwise, we can't do this. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. So I guess the question then is, in the event that we do not have certified free cash, are we going to postpone town meeting? No. Pay the bill. Or, well, that's the alternative. So. I can't imagine right. that free cash is going to take that long to certify. I, I think the state is anxious to get us the MVP money. Um, they just have to get it through the process. I sent Andrew Smith an email, Brenda. I did see that. Thanks. Thanks, Casey. Yeah. Any further discussion? No. Roll call vote. John Bresky, aye. James Cambius, aye. John Kachurik, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. Allison Vanderbilt, and I. Skip Olmstead, aye. Jeff up the All right, that passes 700. Would you like to propose the next one? Make a motion that we approve the unanticipated fiscal 2019 bill for $7,920. I'll second it. Any discussion? Do we have to have these separate or can we put these all together in one? We, we, made, we made the mistake at, yeah. so these were on annual town okay. meeting. We made the mistake of grouping them together and, and when we had a resident, you know, complain about one of them, they all went down in flames. So we yeah. figured we'll so separate them this time. To your, to your answer, we can do it either way. <clears throat> um, in a previous draft of this, town council had pulled it into one article. There is a way to do that. Mm -hmm. We just have to end the motion have them taken as separate votes in every single one. So I initially had it separated. She put it together. I I revised it and separated it. So I think that's smart. Mm -hmm. And just so that anyone or everyone knows, I spoke with Casey about why, why don't we just take this from the reserve fund? And Casey, why don't you give me the answer? Oh, so these are previous year bills. Um, they have to, because they didn't come in within a, uh, the fiscal year <clears throat> that they were contracted, I guess, Brenda, Correct. they have to go to town meeting for approval. Can't just use a transfer from reserve or anything. You have to take it to town meeting. It's a statutory requirement. Waste more time, that's all. <laughs> we have no choice. <laughs> all right. Any other discussion on this? All right, roll call vote. John Peresky, aye. James Cambius, aye. John Petrarch, aye. Julie Chelton, aye. Allison Vanderbilt, and aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. All right, that passes 700. You want to take the next one? Um, I move that uh, the article for the unanticipated fiscal year 2019 bill to transfer the sum of $6,200 to fund. Uh, Unanticipated uh, planning board peer review. Second. Great. Any discussion here? So this is the one that that. Could I ask Casey for? Yes, yeah, go ahead. To explain this one again, but I think the more people hear <coughs> the reason is, then they will accept the fact that we've got to pay these bills. We don't pay the bills, we lose our credit, and it's not worth it. Right, I agree. Yeah, I, I think before having Casey explain the whole thing again. We like we, to hear you talk. Yeah, well, this, I mean, and, and maybe it maybe it's good, and maybe it's what the town needs, but I think as the finance committee, the the purpose of us approving this article is, is that this is the fiscally sound thing to do, whether we object to the fact that we received the bill or not. Not paying the bill is a, a higher, risk. it's a higher risk option yeah. for our town's financial status. Especially so, with all the borrowing that we want to do. Julie made that the, comment right. the other day to me, yeah. and that is the perfect way to really get the point across. So this, what, this amount was for peer review during a particular proceeding in front of the planning board. And it's, um, this is the second part of a contract for additional peer review activity, at the time the contract was signed, the money was not obtained, so it wasn't in our account. Um, and then 
I don't know, somehow or other get, somebody lost track of it, but the applicant to which this peer review related refused to pay the bill. So we didn't follow the process that's in place, and that's actually in the general laws as well. The process is you get the money up front, you sign a contract for the peer review, and then you proceed with the peer review. It's essentially a pass-through in the town's account. So in this case, the money, we didn't have the money when the bill came in, and the bill came in late anyway, which is, yeah. it took us a little while to figure out what was going on. But the upshot is, is so this is a contract that the town, because of the statutory requirements for peer review, had to sign and to, to conduct the peer review. And so by not having received the money first, we, we put ourselves in a bit of a precarious uh, position because now the bills come due. It was, it was voted down at town meeting. Um, so the vendor is still waiting for their money. It doesn't look, make us look great. But to Julie and Allie's point, by not paying our bills, it could affect our bond rating. We have a lot of debt out there because we have some significant projects. Mm -hmm. And if we do not pay our bills, that could have an effect. And that, doesn't, that isn't good for the town because we have projects that we have to get We're done. We're getting good rates right now. And to jeopardize that over, over right. a mistake of ours, not following the rule. I mean, it's, everybody yeah. didn't like what the money got spent on. It doesn't change the fact that it was our responsibility to get right. it before we signed the contract and to follow up on and get the bill on time. So we well, know now. Basically, it was a town mistake. Yep. Yeah. Because we made a mistake, we have to eat it and just pay the bill. Yep. Suck it up. Yep. That's mm -hmm. true. Fine. We did try to obtain a payment from the applicant, but they refused. Yep. And even if we were even if there did remain paths to get reimbursed for that money, you've got to pay your credit card bill, and then yeah. you fight the charge later. Bingo. <laughs> you you don't not pay your credit card bill because that only hurts you. Bingo. It's like sewer abatement. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Pay your, that's, pay, your, that's pay your bill and then abate. Yeah. We fight exactly. about it later, but we got to pay bill. Yeah. It's, it's, it was a mistake that we made. Unintended. Mm -hmm. no, it was I a don't mistake. It was and it's our, you know, we're on the hook for it. Right. So somebody, you know, I'll let you guys worry about what you do afterwards. But right now, I would agree with, every, I think, everybody that I've heard that we should pay the bill. Well, and I think the Finance Committee was on board at town meeting, but we didn't realize there was so much <coughs> <Yep>. <laughs> confusion. Yeah. So, lesson learned. All right. Any further discussion on this one? Nope. No. We'll call vote. John Peresky, aye. Ambius, aye. John Petrarch, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. Allison Vanderveld and I. Uh, Skip Homestead, I. Jeff Upton, I. All right, that passes. Seven zero zero. Next. Make a motion to pay the un unanticipated fiscal year 2018 bill of three hundred fifty dollars. Second. Any discussion? This one. This was this, added. This one on there it wasn't. This isn't a. One it wasn't on in June. Yeah. We didn't have this in June. This is for a bill that we just received notification of. It was for evaluation of land by an appraiser to, for, I think it was the Jewett Ave space. I think it was the um, pilot precision land at the time, because I think Kip, Kip was working on the sale of that. I think he's gotten this moving, and that's, I think he got I, that's where we think shuffle. it did get lost in the shuffle. But I'm almost positive it was for that property. So the, the, this this isn't something we've been holding on to for no. the past no, no, two no, no. years. No, no, it just kind of I didn't came know out of the woodworks. It. Maybe they must have sent the bill and it just well, got lost or something. We utilized them for the company that this bill was needs to be paid to. We utilized for an appraisal for the Oxford property. Oh, while we were prepping for the RFP, and so That's, they found it, it, and we did. I still couldn't tell you what it's from. I can't find any paperwork on it, but. It, it, it mentions you would have in the bill, so, um, so it must be something that, related that to that. That bill that I'm going to submit for $500 for stuff that I did back in 2015, yep. <laughs> we can put it on here, too? If you want to. It could, but we won't approve it. <laughs> now, I mean, re really, shame on them for not following up on that in a timely manner. Yeah. For that reason yeah. alone, I'd like to deny it, but I know we need to pay it. Yeah. 
As long as it's a legitimate bill and, and no one's questioning the legitimacy of it, then I, I believe it was for that, appraisal. for the pilot, pro, <laughs> yeah. pilot land when we were selling them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any more discussion? Nope. Tom Peresky, aye. Cambia, aye. Tom Petrarch, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Allison Vanderbilt, and aye. Skip Umstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. All right. That passes 7 0 0. Next. See that map. What does quantum vote require nine tenths at the bottom mean? That means you've got to get ninety percent of the voters. Ninety percent. It's not two thirds. No. 90%. No, it's actually more. It may be four fifths. I might have that wrong. It may have changed to four fifths. Four fifths. No, it's, it, you, it's nine tenths for a special town meeting. Oh. If it's an oh. annual meeting, it's different. Thank you. Got it. See, I know muni municipal modernization changed something, but thanks, Brenda. All right, next. I'll move to the next article, and I'd like an explanation of what it is. <laughs> sure. Here we go. John, my pleasure. Um, we got done with town meeting, and I came back to my office, and two days later, I looked at those numbers and went, oh, my goodness, those were last year's indirect costs, not this year's. And shame on me for not checking it and making sure um, I had inclinations to do so like three or four times and just didn't. They looked familiar and I thought, okay, these are the right numbers if, without looking. And so um, we're just fixing the dollar amounts for what the indirects really are for fiscal year 22. Changing what we're gonna raise through taxation, right? Yes, and it's and it's really what we're supposed to raise through taxation based on all of the budget work that we did earlier in the spring. What was, I don't have the town meeting, what did we vote to raise and appropriate? Anybody have that handy? Uh, it was like 15,783, so it's, uh, it's like it's supposed to. It's it's like a eleven thousand dollars different from what it's showing now. The decrease. Yeah, and it's and it's not it's not that it's that big of a deal, but since we're going to a special town meeting anyway, uh, Tom Scanlon thought that if we 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 voted it, it that would be the simplest and cleanest way to do this to fix it. It's less so. It's a win-win, win. even so. Yeah. yeah. So the total budget, 15,905,706, is the same. Correct. And the free cash amount is exactly the same. The other numbers I had left in there from last year instead of changing them to this year's numbers. Okay. And the raise and appropriate is decreased from based on that because because we're actually the indirect cost had jumped quite a bit for the wastewater treatment plant because the budget for the wastewater treatment plant has gone up so that's really the biggest change i confess i'm a little baffled by the title of this the I haven't fixed blank it. line of summary appropriation well we don't know if we need to rescind the the vote at annual town meeting or if we have to just re-vote. So I'm waiting for council to give me clarification on so that. Basically, you don't know what words you're gonna use there. Right? Exactly. So Correct. What, what are the, what words are possible that you might use? Um, it could be rescind of our, it, it could be rescind vote, I forget what article um, number it was, but rescind summary appropriation vote annual town meeting. It could have enough, it could have different language. You notice there are no article numbers in case I have to move things around. So I was just waiting to confer with council. The only question that I had on this was, is this strictly the omnibus budget article? It's not anything other than the omnibus budget? Correct. Because the articles that you voted for SCAMS and for sewer both include those correct dollar amounts for indirect costs. Right. right. But it doesn't include any capital uh, items or? No. No, this is just the omnibus budget article. That's the only thing that needed to be fixed.
Um, sounds like discussion has petered out. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, are we ready for a vote? Any other comments or questions? John Fereschi, aye. Uh, James Cambia, aye. John Petrarch, aye. Julie Chalk, and I. Allison Vanderbilt, and I. Skip Umstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. All right. <coughs> Move to the next Thank article. <laughs> Second. So the next article on gender neutral language has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Oh, it's politically correct to do it, so let's just do it. <laughs> we had it mostly <laughs> done in June, oh, but I still think wish it could be two words rather than one. <laughs> Select four. Yeah, I know. Do you see that in different places? Different yeah. towns do it differently. They have yeah. board. They don't have board. Yeah. In 20 years, this will look weird. Yes. Yeah. Or in 20 years, everybody will have used the same term because yeah, it really is. It depends button. on the town. As opposed to an adjective. <laughs> All right. Let's no. vote. John Petrescu, aye. Andy, aye. John Petrescu, aye. Julie Chalk, and I. Allie Vanderbilt, and I. Skip Olmstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. All right. That passes. Seven zero zero. We have a vote on the next one. I mean, not a vote, a motion. Make a motion that we approve the Deerfield Zoning Bylaw Amendment frontage for municipal facilities on town owned lots. A second. All right. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. At the town meeting, this is turned down on a broad basis, mm -hmm. not just for municipalities, but we're voting to approve. 50 foot frontage for municipal use only. Why did they establish 100 feet way back when? Oh, What's there's the reason why. Well, there's many reasons why. Pardon? Many reasons why. <laughs> many reasons why. I, mean, back, I mean, it's all about size of lots and how much you want to spread out, how much you want to make it affordable for others of uh, different means to come to town. There's a lot of reasons why zoning kind of went through back in the day. Um, or, or you just want to separate for, I mean, it depends on the project. It could be um, for noise or, you know, you don't want to do something loud and obstructive next, next to neighbors, that kind of thing. But um, for the amount of projects we have coming through, I mean, you just take the Leary lot in itself. Um, we're hoping for economic development to, to develop that lot. And if we can work out a, a negotiation with Hamshaw Lumber, um, and, and make some space available for um, park life or in front of BBC to develop that, that parcel so we get some economic development there and then get some nice parking, some walking paths out to the restaurants and the stores on Elm Street. Now that uh, Hamshaw Lumber purchased and combined the lots, the only thing that's left is about 50 feet uh, of frontage to get a, to get a one-way road to there. Um, there's several other projects in town. So we, did, we had talked about um, limiting this to um, Central Village District and Commercial One, I think. Is small it, business. Yeah. Small business, is it? C1. Is it C1? Yeah, I can remember C1 or C2. The zone is called small business, but it's identified as C1. So it, it ties in. We were going to just do the Central Village District, and then we realized that the Leary lot is just outside of that in C1. But um, we think it's very important in a small community it, it, when you're hemmed in by you know hemmed in by a bunch of you know a bunch of lots small lots small areas you need to have that flexibility for municipal projects i get that but way back when when they made it 100 feet there was a reason for doing it and now we're kind of saying well let's look the other way if it's a municipal lot we don't have to be concerned about why it was done back when well a lot of things change over the years um I mean, we, we again for residential stuff we had very large lots because we, you know, either we farmed them or we, you know, we we wanted to make sure people had enough money to buy them and live in town. There was a lot of reasons why right. things were were done that way. Right, um, and maybe some and of those reasons impact these. Well, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I think I'm we should look at other things like you know. I'm just putting that out there as a concern. It may be a concern. We're allowing 50 feet. 
and stepping on a reason, for lack of a better word, stepping on a reason that was established years ago. Yes. Have it, well, it sounds like John's worried about like unintended consequences. Yeah. What is it that we're not thinking about? And um, I think from I mean in my experience it, it seems like I don't know I don't know why they, they would have made that decision for this particular zoning bylaw when they when they made it. Um but things do change over time and I think what we need to do is kind of look at what are the needs of the town now. So I, I I support it. I think that it's it's thoughtfully prepared and presented proposal. Um, so what's but I don't the know what difference? The one that was presented at all town or what's ATM annual town meeting mm -hmm. um, was municipal only and was 50 feet. It was different district. It, it was. was it was, it was within, within the, the entire dimensional table. So to your right. point, municipal John. only. It was, it was municipal facilities, yes. but in the entire dimensional table, and there's different frontage requirements in different zones. Right. Yeah, so correct. the industrial yeah, zone has a different frontage requirement as opposed to the residential agricultural zone. And what we would like to do in, in the residential agricultural and in small business is uh, bring that down to 50 feet because in some cases that's the only amount of access you have. Mm -hmm. For instance, if we were to do something around here, we have less than 100 feet in any on either North Main Street or on Conway Street to provide an access back if we were to need an access back to the Memorial Field, for instance. There's only 68 feet over here, and I forget how much it is off of North Main Street. So 100 feet really limits what the town can do with the town-owned land. Mm -hmm. And in the Center Village District, there are several properties. There's this huge chunk of land that is associated with Brayburn Drive but you can't get to it from Braeburn Drive because the amount of space down that road is too small. There's yeah. not enough access space. So the thing that's always hampered the ability to develop that lot is access. So if the town were to purchase a piece of property off of North Main Street, where the lots are a little bit bigger, we could perhaps carve out 50 feet from a lot, not impact if it was a housing lot, not impact the housing lot, but provide access to that space that's far enough back that we can't use Braver. Mm -hmm. So, and we've discussed that for as long as I worked here, that lot, since we received it, that lot has been discussed mm -hmm. to do recreational fields or senior housing. And so you've got an, an active senior housing committee that's looking for the ability to develop that particular um, not that lot intentionally, but that particular type of housing. And if in the central village or small business district, because they butt right up against each other, um, Conway Street is the separation line. So in those two areas, if we can't do anything because we don't meet that dimensional requirement, it could have a necessarily um, negative, benef negative impact on what municipal facilities can be developed. And so that is really what they were looking for. Can you go on a case-by-case -case basis and get exceptions? The, a, without an identifier that municipal facilities can have less than 100 feet, I don't think it's allowed in the dimensional table. I think that's one of the reasons, and we changed the name of it, and we sort of asked the planning board to review it because there wasn't an allowance to narrow it down to less than 100 feet. I'd rather see, I'd rather see if you want to make an exception with municipal lots, say, okay, with Rayburn, we want to have senior housing, but I mean, we need the frontage to be reduced to 50 feet. Okay, then vote on that. Get get a purpose of what you want to do with the lot. So we do. Then do we do have a purpose. We you've have got, a purpose. You've got the Leary lot for one, right off the bat. So you've got the both of you've got the park, park, huh? You've got the Leary lot. You've got the park. I mean, we have ARPA money. We're ready to get moving on economic development in the town and. Our zoning is holding us up. So would we you need explain to explain what what is the hold up on the Leary lot is? Uh, is that if you're it's two, a couple of things, but you can't get like so you would use all the parking to get in and back out. So if we can get a, a, a spot out onto Elm and then do a one way, then you then you've got less traffic, safer. One one way off uh, North Main. Street. Either off off North Main, I would think. Come off north or the other way, whatever. But we out on to Elm. Yep. And Essentially then create an L path. So has that fifty 
feet. Where did that where did that lot come from? The that old, used to be George Fortier's house. The, the house. So that was an established piece of property. Yep. yep. With 50 feet of frontage. Very I know it's more. more. It was so it was a housing lot that Leader Lumber purchased Correct. years ago after Mr. Fortier. I think was I think he had passed away at that point. Oh. Was he still alive? He sold it or it wasn't. He sold yeah. it. They purchased it. They, they purchased knocked it. the house down. They were going to expand. And then was they a, had their own economic. It was a 50 foot piece of property. No. I, I, no. I don't remember what it was. It was more than 100 feet. It was more than 100 feet. They agreed at that time to, if the town would give them, the town could put a road out there and they were willing to give that 50 feet to the town in trade for having some parking spaces in the back of their building. Yeah. Right? So it was a one hand washing the other hand, but it gave them the opportunity, like to sell that portion of the lot. Economic yeah. development. If you can help that business, why not? And then, and then, and that would, and then in that back corner, we'd have more of a park-like area so that um, CBC could kind of develop their back end of the building and open that up to, you know, like a garden tasting area, kind of a, a restaurant area in the back there. And then we'd have parking down, you know, most of the way down the way, and hopefully talk with the Elm Street properties about making pedestrian paths through. We've got some designs, you know, moving on that, and oh. we've got some visuals. But the issue is, is there's two things. It's if we don't have the ability to utilize the lot in the most um, if effective manner, there's no point in trying to go forward with a land purchase. Um, so we don't own that piece of property. We right don't now. own that yeah. piece of property. We've had more than one discussion. Um, and like I said, this started, or like John said, this started a while ago and something happened with the owner of the company when it was leader and we couldn't, you, we couldn't take advantage of it and neither could they. So that lot has sat empty for over 10 years. Um, with the ability to provide some economic development to the to basically the downtown area, but also parking, because mm -hmm. parking can be an issue at least three days of the week. I see this quite a bit now. Um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so it, it helps the downtown businesses, but it also provides the ability for the, for the town itself to create a welcoming space. And so y'all probably weren't at the climate res resiliency meeting February, 2020. It was one of the first meetings I went to. And by and large, and, and I sat and watched it at every table. So there's basically a charrette. And there were groups of people at every table. And the one thing that they focused on was the Leary lot and making some sort of green space but usable area. And so if you look at the pictures, they identify the lot next to the Leary lot. So they start looking at the Leary lot, and then they say, oh, well, what about doing this? Mm -hmm. And every single table had it. It was amazing to me. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody's opposed to the idea of economic development. I'm, but it sounds like all of these are cases where there's, an ac where there's a need for an access road, correct? There's yes. a need for access. Right. And so that's the Why is a road limited by the size of a building lot? Why can't the town just build a street? Because we are we are limited by the same zoning bylaws that everybody else is. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have exceptions in our bylaws for municipal projects. But a street is different from a building lot. It's but the right access way. itself is predicated on what the bylaws say. We have we have a number of 50 foot access right of ways or whatever you want to call them. There's a couple on Gray. There's at least one on Gray Street. There's one or two. Uh, Eastern Avenue, or there were, going to properties on the other side. Hmm. Kelleher Drive, you either had one or used to have one. All going zoning. going to the farmland off Kelleher Drive. Mm -hmm. what, what? I think it's pre-zoning. It could like be when all the, all the zoning came in, it, 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 it's the unintended consequences of saying you need 100 feet or 200 feet or, you know, we wind up... So, so this there is an example. There's a house on my street that doesn't have the full frontage that's required on the street, and there was a hearing um, to get an exception, and the exception was um, approved. Mm -hmm. Who approved so there it? There is a there's a big meeting. It was um, 
you know, the greenhouses, and it, it was oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. It, and so me. now it's like a flag lot and opens up out behind. And, and where did the approval come from? I, without I knowing what it's about, I can't um, tell you. It was planning board or ZBA or one of those. Yeah. But it wasn't Sorry. a town meeting that had to approve. <laughs> no, it wasn't a town meeting. No, no. Yeah. This, it was. It was. There was. But I'm just saying there was a yep. process that there. There is a process for an exception to the zoning rules, at and, least in that case. And why can't we use that process? Why From my understanding, to? talking with our attorneys, this is the best way to allow us to get the projects that we want done done in town. What project? You've, you've got the Leary lot, you've got <laughs> show me. anything around town here, you've got the park, you've got, Braeburn. you know, a Braeburn, you, yeah, many we've different. We've got an active senior housing committee that wants to get moving on senior housing, and they're looking at various lots, in mostly downtown. in the center of town, because from a senior housing perspective, people want to be able to walk to the places that they need things from. That's, that's, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I, my concern is that are we doing something that we don't need to do because we could do it wish. some other way? I wish. Uh, nope. If it was as simple as just getting a question done, we'd have done that. It'd have been a lot easier than fighting this twice. Uh, the problem I'm having, I'm, I'm, I'm like weighing, it's good for the finances of the town to have economic development versus it's bad for the person who lives next to the 50-foot right of way that ends up with the road right next to their house, right? So you're weighing the, the like personal finances versus the town finances. And it was pretty vehemently argued against at annual town meeting. And the examples that were argued so vehemently that I remember were the park mm -hmm. yeah. and Braeburn. So the park. Uh, both of which fall within the area that's on here. Correct. So I the other... Uh, so the park, what we can do is put a cul-de-sac in there. A subdivision, a subdivision plan road. road is what that's called. Subdivision plan road. Cost the town a whole lot more money mm -hmm. and sucks up all the space that we wanted to use for the park and parking and all of that. So it, it, this is a more economical way about going around the projects that we want to get done in a smarter way, less infrastructure built, less money spent. Less um, impact on the neighbors. Less impact on the neighbors. You can do more with that lot that's next to the Leary lot if you have the available frontage and don't have to engineer the access. Well, who's, who's, I, who has that piece of property? Hanshaw Lumber. It's yeah. not ours. Yeah. It's not going to be ours ever. So we have... We don't know no, that. We have, <laughs> we have the Leary lot, obviously. It goes yeah. all the way in and hooks around. That's not in question. That's, yeah. That's not in question. The access road out onto Elm, we think, is really important for safety and just a flow of traffic and, and economic development. I was in talks with Leader. They were all set to go, and they ended up sell, selling the building. And he said, the, uh, the new person is interested in this. Please meet with them and figure this out. So we're in discussions about doing a, figuring out the design, when they're going to expand. But we're not, in, you know, in, unless we have ability to make it happen, we're not interested in doing a swap. My feelings my feelings on this on this item, I think I can narrow down to like what is the purview of the finance committee? And I think that the the financial impact of this article I think that I think that it's pretty clear that it's good for the town's development, good for you know, from a financial perspective, and that's really the the goal of this committee and the. No, it's not. Well, it is. Sorry. A part. You need, you need to read state law. Well, if, no, you need to read if, state law. It says that we would need to make a recommendation on yeah, all of this, regardless right. of the financial impact. Sure, but we are the finance committee, and and I think that our primary focus is financial, and I think that that's how we should frame our discussions about these items. I don't think it means you have to keep your personal opinions away from it, and I don't think it means you can't vote for something that is financially beneficial, because we're we're weighing those items. But for me, and I'm I'm speaking for myself. For me, the motivator in this one, and the real argument is the financial impact, and I. I mean, I, I think it's very well. We're not out. another zoning board. 
Right, right. We don't need we don't need to duplicate the efforts of the zoning board. Thank you, Jim. It's a good way to put it. Um, and I think that there could be a lively debate at the special town meeting. Mm -hmm. But when we're looking at whether the finance committee recommends this article, for me, it's a no-brainer. Like, yes, of course, I will write, I will support this article um, because I think it's been well well researched. I think that the financial impacts are pretty clear and beneficial, um, and I think that the the downsides are more cultural, um, you know, more about the, the, the development and how, how we want the town to, to go um, and, and how we want it to be built. So that's all I want to say about it. John, you had a comment. Did, did the planning board approve this? Did, did, they, did they need to approve it? They did. Huh? So this is a zoning article. It does have to go through the planning board, and I don't want to leave our, our two ladies from the planning board out. Um, the planning board and the select board met about this because we did change the frame of this to limit it to two specific areas. So select board and planning board discussed it and they've moved it forward to the hearing process. Right. The hearing is the 13th of September. So they'll discuss it again in a public hearing and take public comment at that point um, on consideration of this. But yes, the planning board had robust discussion at two different meetings about this. So, Right. And then you vote. Right. And then after the hearing. They will vote a recommendation um, or not after their hearing. But the language has to exist in so far as it is complete now as a placeholder. So what you're seeing in all of these articles are placeholders. In this case, if there would be a tweak to the language or in any of the other zoning articles that still have to have hearings, those would come after the hearing except for one, and I'll talk about it later before they get to talk. <laughs> so the planning board has not approved this article? They've approved the language to go to a hearing, yes, they have. They have not approved the article, correct. You, but you have not voted this article? Correct. Until after the hearing? So I guess my question then is, why should we approve it until the planning board has approved. The reason for that would be because the language in that right article now. likely won't change the yeah, financial impact on, on the town and we're the finance committee. I mean, if it, if it substantively input. changes the, the language in, in a way that it changes that impact, then I think that this committee should re re so look should at it. it. But yeah. if, it's yeah. in, if it's not a substantive sure. change, then it, why, would we, why would we do the same thing twice? That's my point. Why should we do it twice? Why don't we wait until it's been voted by the planning board, and then we'll take the vote for yeah, the fine. town meeting, okay. yeah. we'll yeah. we'll which is the way we do okay. all other articles. Do you think there's a benefit to having a hearing close to the town meeting, and so when you're thinking about which items you can check off in preparation for a town meeting, I mean, I can see why having the finance committee approve it in preparation, like as is, Right, the way that it the way that it appears here in preparation for that hearing can be pretty meaningful, or not approve it. It doesn't mean the finance committee has to approve it. John but, and then Jim. Yeah. John, go ahead. All right. Basically, I'm in favor of this. The reason I'm in favor of it was because we started discussions with uh, Cedar Lumber, which was Elder Lumber before, back when I was a selectman a long, long, long time ago. And the whole intent of this thing was to work with Cedar Lumber at the time <clears throat> to improve their parking because their parking is terrible around the other side of the building. Right. The other side of their building where that building is stated is situated right now, the town owns two feet away from there. I mean, yep. cars parked on the side there for years and it was always town parking and they always thought it was their parking, but it was not. not. So they realize that they have a parking problem. Right. So one of the reasons of solving, one way of solving the problem was to turn around and give them some space. And by moving that parking lot back there, give the people a place to pull in, park, and be able to walk into their store. And at that time, for a trade, they were going to give the town a 50-foot right-of-way so that we could put a road in there. And at that time, we didn't say one way. Oh. With 50-foot, you could still have two-way traffic if you wanted. Yep. Okay, so that was one. The second one, we were given a property over 
off of Brayburn Road. 50% was to be used by the Recreation Department. 50% was given to the town for town housing or any other purpose. The problem is we have the property, we own the property. The question is, do we ever want to develop it? And if we want to develop it, Rayburn Road, with the houses so tight and the road so narrow, you really can't get the fire trucks down there that you should. At the end of Rayburn Road, they have a 65 foot right away out onto that property. So you could still turn around and get a road to go in there, but it's still got to be less than 65 feet because that's all we own. Uh, the fire trucks are still going to have a problem going to Rayburn Road, though. No, but if you turn around and buy a 50 foot right away from one of the houses on North Main Street that can go straight in there. And you may not even have to uh, rip down the house. You may be able to, instead of buying the property and ripping down the house, you, somebody may be willing to sell a 50 foot right away to us and we could develop the road and they can still live there. So now we're talking about buying more property. No, I'm talking about buying a right away. Okay, buying. So, but the thing is, you can't develop it unless you do that. I understand that. And then the third one is the one up for the town park. So the question comes down to economics. Do you turn around and do a hammerhead in there, which means you could have a major road construction and take up half the use, or would you rather have ball fields in there or whatever else they can do? And if they're concerned, the neighbors are concerned about the noise from a half dozen things on the town park, then they ought to be more concerned about the ones on the other side of the track. They'll have a heck of a lot more venues and probably have a lot more louder music than anywhere else. And I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying there's a good and sufficient reason to have all three of these things approved because they just make simple common sense. It's a way of moving the town forward or you do nothing and argue amongst yourself and do nothing. So to me, I support this. That's all I have. Yeah. I was going to suggest that perhaps uh, um, Mr. Olmsted's right that we should table this until after the planning board meeting, particular article. We I'm do a that. little shaky on my. Um, In other words, basically. Parliamentary process. Put, put it aside. Can you make a recommendation that we table it? I, I mean, move that we move table that the article. And second it. Is that the way where you move it? <laughs> I, I remember um, my Robert's that's rule. The, is that the yeah. process? Like you would move it, we would second, we would right. vote on that. If you vote to table it, we can resurrect it right. at the next meeting. Well, I yeah. think if you table it, the intent of tabling typically is to kill it so you can't vote it and bring it up again. No, tabling means you're mm -hmm. not going to vote so on it. Now, in a lot of cases, it's used as kind of a pocket veto where you just That's table it. That's what they use as a again. pocket veto at town meeting. When you table something, you're basically throwing it away and you're not going to consider it again. Yeah, All right, don't use the word table and change the postpone. Uh, you want to postpone, that's fine, right. but I wouldn't want to okay. table it. Just, Let's use that term. There is, there, is, there is no such thing as postponing. There is a thing sure. to put it on table. Yeah. I don't have a problem bringing this back. I, I do have a problem in us taking action on something that is that belongs to the planning board that they have not voted. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Hmm? I don't I don't have a problem with that. I, I understand wanting wanting, you know, input to bring to a hearing. So that's my that's my first um, the question is do you do vote in now or do you schedule another finance committee meeting fifteen minutes before the town meeting and then have a meeting and vote it then and then the chairman can report on that. Well, we've you got to do that with this one. You've got four others. You're we've got have to do 10 or 12 pages or 15 <laughs> pages of planning board articles, and I'm guessing, I could be wrong, that the planning board has not voted any of these. Correct. And we then, can't vote so, on them until they go, until we have a public meeting. Pardon? Public hearing. We, we, public hearings. We can't vote on I, them. I understand that. And, and I that think. So. But, so. For, for the process, though, you voted on the verbiage to take to the hearing. Yep. In the process of the hearing, no substantive changes can yeah. be made to it. No so it's not going to be the box of the article. Right. Wait. Yeah, it can't be more restrictive. So the planning board public meeting. Can I make a motion to that we wait to vote on this article until after the planning board votes on it? 
Can we put uh, that language? We have a second. Sorry, second. wait to vote. Yes, second. second. Have discussion on that motion. So, is there discussion? Yeah, I. To me, that that doesn't make sense. We're just sort of like. People want to speak. Um, let, let Ali finish her. Let me ask I, feel, I want to speak for a moment because I feel like I am consistently being interrupted, and I feel like it is in part because I am a soft-spoken woman, and I'm I'm done. I'm a little too tired. Do that mask. Well, John, if I take off the mask, I'm going to put all of you at risk because I work in a healthcare facility. So I'm I'm just I'm feeling frustrated. Um. Anyway, my my perspective on this is is like. We want, we want to know before we vote on this item at town meeting that everybody has approved it or supports it in the verbiage that is actually what the town is going to be responsible for approving or denying. I, for, for me, it feels like the input that the finance committee supports prior to the public hearing, you know, or, or the you know, lack of support from the finance committee prior to the hearing is a meaningful discussion piece at the public hearing, if it's not going to change substantively, we already know what the impact is from the perspective of the finance committee, and therefore it doesn't doesn't do us any good to wait, and it may just confuse them, you know, why are we having the hearing before the finance committee's reviewed it? So that's my perspective. Thank you. Jeff, you're up. I have a question. Uh, the public hearing, if I understand it, is on the 13th of September here, right. Monday night. Now, if we're having a public hearing, if there's a group or individuals or whatever the case may be that make statements during that public, public hearing, are you telling me that their concerns or whatever the case may be Cannot change the language that's already here. But or it doesn't. It could happen. change it to an extent, right? It, where, where, where we have some language here that we all may agree with, but there could be <laughs> even if it's minor changes. All of a sudden, we may not agree with those. Correct. And so, so I guess, and I, so I guess, I'm kind of leaning towards Skip. <laughs> As far as, and I understand because I've sat in with the planning board and select board on their meetings and that, and I understand direction they're heading, but I'm just saying, just in case this public hearing sways any of this language one way or the other, wouldn't it be a little premature for us as a committee to vote whether to support it or not support it? I would rather wait till after the public hearing and then vote it, because at least I know at that point the language is concrete and it's not going to change after the public hearing. And I know you're saying, Casey, and I understand completely what you're saying, that it, it, even if it did change some, it may not be a significant change, but it could be enough to sway me to vote one way or the other. And, and so... I guess at this at that point with those comments, and and once again, I think the the planning board did a great job with the select board as far as trying to move this article forward. I understand the article, but I also understand some of the concerns that John brought up uh, with the article and the changes. So that's all. Thank you. Trevor, you're up. Thank you. Um, so I'm glad that you're at least entertaining this because the, the, um, the sentiment we got at the last annual meeting was that there was no time to look at all these things. Oh my goodness, like we've got 70 pages of zoning stuff and we haven't had a chance to look at any of this stuff. So I'm glad you, I, whether you vote or not, doesn't really matter. It'll still move forward, whether you recommend, don't recommend or whatever. The issue is just looking at this text, understanding what it means, what it says, and the direction the town boards are, are moving is the important part. To look at it, what do you think about it, wait till after a meeting, that's fine. And, and, and it, may, it may change significantly, in which case it won't make it onto town meeting. It just won't happen, and it'll have to go next year. Um, 
but there's a lot in this thing. That, you know, we have, we're, this is the small one, the mm. frontage. I mean, yeah. you've got a lot left to go here tonight, and I just think it's important that yeah. you guys at least look at it, weigh in on some of this stuff, and so we can have some thoughts on, on what you're feeling about it, and then, you know, we bring that up through the meetings. But, so that's all. Considering all the comments, I think we should probably postpone the rest of this until after the public hearing. It does, to me, it doesn't make sense to continue our discussion because if, I mean, the solar one is, <laughs> that's a lot, that's, excuse me? Yep. Flood plane. Flood plane. Flood plane. Flood plane. <laughs> that one's easy. <laughs> we, we hope. But yeah, I don't know if it makes sense to continue. I mean, if, if. Well, we get a motion on the floor sense. right here now. Hold this off, and then we'll have a finance committee meeting 15 minutes before, so we can discuss it. So well, how did it come? So yeah. when is your when is your planning board meeting after the 13th? The process is that we have the public hearing on the 13th, and then a meet, then we close the discussion that evening. We have deliberations, at which point we may consider making changes that aren't substantive, mm -hmm. that are only clarifications, and then we vote on the verbiage then that will go to the warrant. Right. Um, if, if, if there were time, and if we wanted to, you were wondering about terminology, there are times when we can continue a public hearing and pick it up at another meeting. So you were wondering, postpone, uh, whatever. You know, I don't know if continue is a word that you could use for continuing. Your so at the end, assuming you don't continue, at the end of the 13th, you will have full final for all of the ones that you'll be passing yes. on to the. And when does it have to be published before no, town meeting? Except for one article. Before everybody. We're not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> You're not leaving. I, I can get to that in a minute, but we need to make a good point. And so is everybody else. The point is, if you want to wait on it, read it. Um, but there is one element, you guys have a motion on the floor. Um, there is one article that we walked away from the Okay, well, let's hold that thought. Voting so on this article. motion is only for this uh, article right we, now. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, what, you know, we're talking about these, this article, and, and in some way we're talking about the rest of the articles too. Uh, we have a, Town meeting scheduled for October 4th. Uh, whether, is there any reason that it absolutely has to be October 4th? It can't yes. be? Yes. It's been called. We have what? It's been called. Called what? It's been called All the meeting. So they scheduled it, asked me to develop a warrant. That you're going to have, I mean, it's scheduled over at the auditorium at the school. So, but just because the select board screwed it up doesn't mean that you have to go. I no, I, I, you, so you I gave me an input there. The <laughs> well, um, the, the point is, we, we this past spring, we had the situation where the planning board, right next to town meeting, voted several articles and we really, I didn't get a chance to, to go through those articles and ask much in the way of questions that I'm being put into that situation here. There are, I just want to know a little bit more about these articles. I think that's why it's What would happen, committee. do me a favor, you didn't want me interrupting you, please don't interrupt I me. I had an answer Please to don't question. interrupt me. Uh, you want to talk? Go ahead. Go ahead, talk. No, go ahead Skip, please finish. Uh, so, what, let's, let me just hypothesize, what would happen if we had a town meeting in November? What would happen if we had a town meeting in January or a cold. town meeting in February? Could we not take up these articles then? And the answer clearly is yes, we could. Why we have to do it now is beyond me. I think it's that question. How about if we come to the planning board meeting and ask the planning board? Exactly. Or better yet, I would have. Okay, so let, let's. I would have pref preferred, <laughs> frankly, to have listened to what was being said tonight, and then I was going to ask, 
that the Finance Committee invite the Planning Board to a Finance Committee meeting to discuss these articles only. We invited the chair of the Planning Board, and you're on the Planning Board as well, right? right? So. I was just going to say, Skip, you're welcome to come to our meetings. Jeff has been faithfully attending all our meetings, so he's yeah. up to speed with all of that, pretty much. I mean, you've been there as long every meeting that we've been at. So, you know, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I attend some of the select board meetings so that I have a better understanding of what's going on. I'm here tonight to have a better, better understanding. I know everyone's busy, but... You know, we can't keep postponing things, and it's not up to us to set the meetings. That's the select board. Actually, you're, it's your articles and presenting those articles. Well, yes. All right. So um, what I would like to propose that we do is uh, first we're going to vote on postponing this article since we have a motion on board. And what I would like to propose that the way through this is that we go ahead and since we have our planning board reps here, we go ahead and discuss the remaining planning board items that are on the warrant to ask any questions that we have. I have a feeling that we don't want to vote any that the planning board hasn't voted. Um, so, but we have time available. So let's go ahead and discuss it and ask questions and get some discussion out of the way. The hearing is on the 13th. We have the week of the 13th. So maybe we can, we'll check everybody's schedules. Maybe we can schedule a finance committee meeting later that week mm -hmm. 13th is a Monday so wouldn't wouldn't our meeting have to be after the planning board meeting yeah not after the hearing but after their meeting right they meet the <coughs> same day as the hearing so they have the hearing they meet that's all on the 13th they'll be done the 13th. Oh, you're, you're, you're gonna meet on and they're gonna on meet the on the 13th yeah. okay yeah so we can meet like the 15th right. or the 16th depending on our schedule and um and the rest of the world schedule so is that I have one same reasonable question. Yeah. The, the um, motion on the table now is whether to basically defer this until after the claim board voted, but I'm wondering if we should amend that to include the other, all the articles, or are we going to need yeah. to make a motion to approve them? Or just it's just to get us out of that motion. Right. We don't have to make a motion to approve them. We can just talk about them. Yeah. Right? Correct. Sure. We yeah. can discuss. We, okay. Yeah, we can just, you can... So we have a motion and a second on the table to postpone voting on this motion, this motion the frontage for municipal facilities, until the next time we meet. Yes. Is there any Another further time. discussion until on that part committee. of the motion? Until the next finance. Until the next finance committee meeting, right. No, just don't need to say anything. Just go by Okay. It. Let's have our roll call vote. John, you get to go first. <laughs> um, I made a motion. <laughs> John Peresti says I. I forget what I moved. Tammy <laughs> <laughs> is I. John Petrarch, I. Julie Chalfin, I. Allie Vanderbilt, no. Skip Olmstead, I. Jeff Upton, I. So we have 610 to table whatever to postpone voting on the motion on the frontage for municipal facilities until our next finance committee meeting. Right. The next article on here, I think planning board has already voted, right? We still have another. Okay, never mind. I'm just getting confused, but I don't have to be confused. We have this other motion now. on the table, but we Got decided it. that right. we're just so we're dismissing that. Okay. Whether that's okay or not, that's what we're doing. We'll withdraw okay. that motion. Do you want to? We well, I mean, be legal? No, I mean I, I, I moved the postponement, but I think, we're I think we may as well. That's Let's what move we're planning on. Planning to do with all of them, right? Um, <laughs> so we just voted on it. Zoning vote. bylaw go, amendment floodplain district. You guys voted, right? Correct. So we can vote this one. So do, um, anybody like to make a motion on the next item? Floodplain district. Oh, so this one was already passed by the planning board. <clears throat> okay, and I'll make a motion that we uh, look at Deerfield zoning bylaw amendment chapter 179 section 4300 floodplain district. We have a second. Second. Alley. Beautiful. All right. Any discussion? This is just because it references a paragraph that doesn't exist? Correct. That, that's Correct. the only change? Correct. Yes. Does anybody want to talk about this anymore? Just the only thing I wanted was an explanation of what, what, it, what it entailed that wasn't there already. Well, it was uh, referring to the Massachusetts State Building Code Section 744, and they made a change with 744, so there's no longer a 744. So we're just saying now that we're 
<coughs> saying that the Massachusetts State Building Code pertaining to construction on the floodplain, not specifically in a section that doesn't okay. exist. Okay. So the current says yeah. current section 744, and we're just removing that yes, because all they've it. done whatever they did and got rid of it. Yeah, those three words we're just taking out. So we remove the question. Can we vote? <laughs> John Presky, aye. Cambia, aye. John Pachurk, aye. Julie Chalkin, aye. Allison Vandervelden, aye. Skip Olmstead, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. All right, that passes 700. The next one is the Tourism Overlay District, um, which I propose that we do not have a motion or vote on it, but if there is any discussion, Discussion. They may have questions or comments. This is another one that the planning board has not approved. Or? Yet again, we we are having a public hearing on it on the 13th of 13th September. Okay. And yeah. yep. Could we just take a couple minutes and have you talk to us about? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I think also Casey has something to elaborate with, and then you, Trevor. Sure. So. Um, so th this is uh, developing a, a tourism overlay district that encompasses kind of our five and ten corridor. Um, it, it'll pick up the currently now, which is the um, new barbecue place and the lot behind that, and then also Yankee Candle, and then kind of up both sides. I have a map if anyone wants to see that. I can go get it off my desk too. Um, be great to see a map. Yeah, one, one I draft on the that. desk. Okay, yeah. great, perfect. Um, so it, let me share my screen. Oh, yeah, I think it should. Um, can the host hear us? <laughs> hey, Alex, can you let me share my screen? Um, yeah, I think you should be able to just do it. I, I don't. Uh, host disabled oh. participant screen sharing. Oh. Okay, now try. Yeah, that worked. Thank you. Great. Good, good, good. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'll, I'll stand at the you board here. The, 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 the two lots I just talked about, the, the barbecue with a lot behind it, gate candle. Um, there's a little portion of uh, land where 116 goes up just to the south of 116, and then um, everything kind of north here. Um, to the animal hospital, and the candles up, uh, the offices are up here, and then this is all of uh, kind of treehouse property. So this will there to there, um, and that that will be the tourism overlay district, and it allows um, just allows uh, activities there that aren't aren't allowed at the at the moment without changing a you know creating a, another whole zoning um, thing. This this creates kind of like our, our marijuana was an overlay district. This would be a, a, a tourism overlay district. And it, it'll, if you read through this, it allows, you know, all kinds of different things. It allows uh, ability for craft brewing and craft entertainment, um, uh, assembling, bottling, manufacturing. So all the things that kind of Treehouse is going to do. And then other, other um, entities, Yankee Candle or this or that may want festivals. Uh, temporary in nature, one day or you know, multi-day events, um, food truck festivals, um, car shows, beer and wine festivals, um, culinary festivals, arts festivals, um, concerts, that kind of thing. So um, it really, it really just allowed um, allowed businesses or development in those areas to do the kind of things that we're looking for with Treehouse and with any other. You know, something that may want to come in and purchase the property and do their thing. The, um, so then, Dunkin' Donuts or a donut shop could come in and have a, or a McDonald's could go in there and have a drive-through. No. That's the current zone. Yeah. yeah. The overlay, it does change. No, it's just no. Because it does. It doesn't allow that. Says you can have drive through paragraph two. What? Only for picking up beer. Oh, yeah, only yeah. For but it says that it's okay. governed by the right. pertinent regulations to the underlying district. Hey, John, also the Coffee formula beer, based okay. bylaw was passed. Drive through beer. 
Anyway. <laughs> I guess my question is, why is this not more extensive? Why is um, um, why isn't BBC in there? Why is, right, yes, why isn't BBC in there? Yes, that was why one of my Amy questions. Street, why isn't this whole block between Conway, Elm, Maine, Railroad part of this? Good why isn't the Hotel Warren part of this? <laughs> I don't know. So, of our main so this, this, again, this is beginning this process of, of kind of figuring out, you know, uh, do we do the whole town? Uh, you know, I don't know. So you've got to limit it somewhere. We felt like this would be a good start and then see how this goes. I think it's kind of a, a walk before you run. And we wanted to kind of see how this lays out. What, what are the, you know, before you open it up to the whole town or diff, different areas, are there any areas that, you know, you, you need to keep a lot of this, you, you wanted in, in this, you needed to keep 75% of the land, or excuse me, 25% of the land open space. So a lot of these other areas don't have the space already for that. Um, so, you know, th this looked like a good spot, a good starting spot to, um, again, to walk before we run, see how it goes, what, what are the what are problems before we open it up to other, other parts. I think Jim brings up a good point. They're not being fair to some of the existing staff. Again, some of them can't. They just don't have the space for it, you know. So, but there's not there's not a reason why we couldn't expand it. Uh, the one with the barbecue, I guess that's why there. Dave thought it would be good for economic development there. Uh, that was a suggestion of his, but I don't I don't really know. Who? David Wolfram. Okay. Yep. Uh, some lot behind it, wasn't that the potato storage? Behind the I'm barbecue? Sure. Yeah, it was, o it was open that. land. I'm not sure what's there now, but, I mean, it's open right now. Open land. There used to be a potato storage. Used to be potato storage. storage. Yeah. Before my time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ones on... Not showing there well. Uh, where it says four, that's all right. Where it says four sixty-eight and sixty-six, those are Yankee Candle properties, right? Yes, I believe that's. that's okay. I believe that's all Yankee Candle. Okay, and now the ones that say sixty-one, sixty-five, five, six, nine, and seven, those are not. That's not part of the deal, right? That light yellow. Right. A anything that's not in yellow is not part of the deal. Or the dark yellow. Or the right. bright yellow. Right. So, so let's make sure that these. That one with the blue dash line around it. Here. Not, not this. Not But again, if people, you know, through public hearing or something, right. see other lots that we didn't pick up on, or you know, it, again, it can it can go a little more expansive, but not. The uh, one that says. 159.5, Uh Those are residential properties right now, aren't they? 159, 156. Two houses. They're, they're like houses right in there. On the corner. So. Or at least 159.5 is a house, yeah. I believe. This is here. This is Oh, is it? Is the house behind it? 159.6. Oh, two. the houses are on like three. Yeah, two and three, I believe. This is, I think it's a pasture. That, um, I'll take a look. I thought 159.5 had a house on it. I don't think yes, so, it, but it used to have a house on it. There was a house down there. I could be wrong, but I thought that was. And nasty. the other properties are all uh, on the right hand side of uh, 5 and 10. And uh, those, those are all part of. Uh, What's the name? Treehouse. Treehouse. Yes. Nothing else. Uh, Nothing else. But but all of the treehouse is yes. included in that. Okay. Yep. And on the other side of the road. Uh, what are, what's the hash marks on like seven and fourteen? Number eight, one fifty dash eight, looks like it's split. Yeah. So that only half of that property is in there. The other half is no, not. So this is a separate property. This is the um, animal hospital. Yeah. And then this is Yankee Candle up here. So this is animal hospital right here. Okay, so this is not one piece of property. That's correct. Yep. Right. Even though it says eight, I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it is just this one, this map here. Okay. 
So those, that's just a field in there now. Yeah, there's some woodland in there, but yeah, there's quite a bit of wetland. In so we're going to cut well. trees down in there? They may, after they do an inventory. Hire oil scientists or whatever you have to hire. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we have people looking at that property, but not for entertainment. Well, that was the parcel they tried to get us down, and we refused it. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> Okay, the only suggestion I would have is, uh, I'm not sure how to vote on it, but I think I'd probably support it the way you propose it. But I think if you're going to do this, and it looks like you're doing it primarily for free health brewery, I think you have to give the competitor an equal advantage. Mm -hmm. yes. So my suggestion yeah, if is, it, the, least you get, the least you have to do is incorporate parcel 135 for Berkshire Brew. Okay. I think you That's have to good, do that good point. because we'll they over. have asked for permits before for different types of things. Yeah. They're going to allow this, and we should allow it for them. Absolutely. Yeah, if they have, you know, if it meets that, you know, space and all, sure. I mean, I think it, I agree. I mean, we want to promote them just as I, much as anybody else. I generally agree. The only concern that I have is the properties that surround right. Berkshire Brewing are, are a little res different. Are residential for the most part. Yeah. Are large. yeah. There are a number of residential properties. Right. And do you really want that to? Good, and the good one that discussion. has 168, for me at least, smacks of uh, 168. Zone, what they call zoning, uh, spot, zone. spot zoning, spot zoning. It may not be technical. No, I think it's overlay. It's not, but um, we're, we're doing something there that we're not doing for the surrounding properties. So I get really con kind of concerned about that. Whether that's legitimate? Yeah. It's the part you can't see down there. Yeah, down oh, below okay. by the... Yeah, there you go. Thank there you. you. <laughs> yeah. Those two, eight and 69. So that everybody... It was all that was kind of available there. These two here, the little of everything oh, okay. else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the barbecue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we felt those were kind of open and had had some space for economic development and all, and, and the other, you know, just where, where none of the others really did. Um, everything else was more industrial in that spot and hemmed in by a lot of other stuff. So there just wasn't the space. So we w wanted to be as inclusive as we could, but, um, but yeah, well, I mean, we'll look you at that. Mentioning sure it's good, good, good points to bring up. I, I would take a look at that. I, I might even look, look back over the history of what's gone on in that property. Just meaning like uh, you needed to keep 25% of the property right. as open space, and a lot of them don't have a lot of... Well, that's why we kind of picked that out. There was a lot of space behind that. Why is the tourism overlay district adding extra green space requirements above and beyond the underlying zone? They, they Well, I think all of them are... It, it's at least 20% for any other parcel in development, and I think... So, we, I mean, you know, if it's zoned industrial, you know, well, it's, I don't know whatever green space requirement it would have. Why does making it part of the tour? I mean, we felt tourism doesn't always tourism involves things. I mean, you know, New York has a huge tourism industry and no green space. You know, <laughs> I agree. You know, Times yeah. Square has no green space. In it. Yeah, it's a park. Uh, yeah, but I mean, okay, Times Square has no Yeah, problem. this was, you know, again, this had to do with negotiations between entities, you know, lawyers, and kind of felt like what, what that needed to be in there. I, I'm certainly open to listening. You know, there was an initial talk of, of having, you know, 50%. Something that's attempting to encourage development of a specific type, adding extra requirements. <laughs> Whereas if they were just on an industrial track that isn't part of this, they could. Presumably they would still have, have that same. I think we're we're talking five percent because I think I believe most areas it's all twenty percent so to be open space for, you know, when you, when you have driveways, parking lots, buildings, that kind of thing. You need right. some of it for drainage and uh, and, and open. You space. know, suppose I wanted to do that. Um, Wooden building on Railroad Street behind the across, you know, by, across from the Berkshire Brewery track. Yeah. You know, it's this crummy old industrial uh, uh, building. But you know, suppose I wanted to rehab it and turn it into a nightclub. You know, yeah. why would that have suddenly have to require green space when the whole point is you're having a nightclub? In the yeah, this is entirely hypothetical. Talking to the wrong person. <laughs> I'm not a zoning expert. Okay, I don't know. 
I don't know why, you know, I, you know, I think it has to do with development and, and making sure that you have space to, for your drainage and all that, because, you know, water, all that, all those requirements so would change. Would existing structures all be grandfathered in? A lot, a lot of, unless you take it down and rebuild, but yes, typically. Yeah, I was I gonna believe. say, I don't know the specifics about existing structures, but we're trying to um, really consider the character of the town and, and having green space, so that is really important instead of, you know, just covering all the space, you know. You know, I've recently some people on the Deerfield Now page, Facebook page have been posting photos of downtown as it was before the, what was it, the hotel mm. Lathrop burned down, yeah. the Redmond Hall. Right. It was a great deal denser than it is now. Yeah. It had less green space and was more attractive. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. But more elm trees, for sure. Yeah. A lot of things were a lot more attractive years ago. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you know. But, you know. There are other ways to make a town effective to green space. And tourism, you know, town. thrives on having things right next to each other that people can walk to. Mm. Yeah, so I think I think back to the the, the requirements were it's twenty percent already everywhere. So we felt in this location twenty five percent was not a far stretch for 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 the land that we were looking at. It seemed certainly doable you know, the attorneys that were hoping to do the businesses in those areas felt it was fine as well. It seems to me, for the most part, this is targeting existing businesses. No, well, you've got another whole chunk of land there with nothing for business. So we're tr trying to attract it. It's really wet, though. <laughs> well, it's developable. I mean, we've had it looked at for, there's, there's quite a bit you can put in there. And even though it's wet, that can be part of the 25%. Right. Mm -hmm. Keeping the wetlands, but it may not be an issue. Okay. Sorry. I, it. <laughs> I still think we're really being unfair to existing businesses. Extremely unfair. I don't think it's unfair at all. Well, you know, maybe. I mean, it's not like you can't. Maybe we'll do, hear from. Problems. What would you want to do in the existing business? Well, the first day brewer wants to put in a. a What's the language in paragraph two? What? The drive-through delivery. Well, they just have to go before the planning board and see if it, it's something that can fit. Yeah, it's not that just because this is a tourism district, no other businesses can come before the planning board and, and look at other things. This is trying to develop um, and bring tourism. Yeah, the other businesses don't have to. to. <laughs> well, they may not have and, a and space, point, you know. The, the whole idea is when you look at a business plan, is my space suitable for what I want to do? Maybe we have to expand or move or so a lot the, the barbecue place for lack of a better expression probably has the same amount of space or less than the brew. Berkshire brew. I don't know that. But sure they do. Huh? They do. They have less, right? A lot less. So we're saying, okay, what one say one sixteen and one seventeen? You can have craft establishment, but with all the benefits that go with it, as outlined here, the Berkshire Brewery, you can't. you got to have to go to the planning board. There's no there's no reason that we could. I mean, there's still a public hearing, John. This isn't set in stone. And it could be expanded down the road. I mean, there has to be, you have to start somewhere. So, you know, your point's I'll well taken. You move well, on. Okay. Okay. Right. The, the spot zoning concern is, I mean, I bet you're going to hear a lot about this. At the it is not. Okay. It's not. We've already, I mean, but it looks it. like it. It may look like it, but it's You're going to hear a lot about this at the, at the yeah. open meeting. You have to start somewhere. So. I had a question on the uh, special permit granting authority. It says in this case that the planning board shall be the only one that can grant this permit. Yep. So in granting the permit, what are you cutting out from other towns? I think anything. Uh, that the so select the board CBA, will do. The, you still select. have the conservation commission. You still have everybody else has to do everything. And then what you're going to do is instead of the select board, the select board does the entertainment license, the overlay district, and any you know work that's done goes for a site plan review and. Anything that the planning board already does in a special permit. So why the 
selectmen don't do anything in any other district. Why this yep. district? We do in the expedited permitting district. Uh, yeah, I we did argue, pilot. I could argue that one too. You've had that one for 20 years and done pretty much nothing. Well, I think we have Not a nice you, town garage and a nice a nice development with jobs in there, and we're we've got an ad in the paper right now for more economic development. That's a question. Why did you go to Greenfield to do that? It's time. Okay, that's what I want to know. <laughs> You're overwhelmed. Yes, yeah. yes, just very quickly. Uh, uh, I hope people stop and take a look at this and reconsider. I think John and Jim brought up some excellent points as far as uh, some of the other business in town, and it would be awful nice if we could include them in this article. Uh, so they have the privilege of the same benefits of the others and uh, without jumping through additional hoops. It, you know, we've been here a long time in that and I, I would, if I was a business owner, I'd feel slighted to be honest with you. And I don't want them to get that impression. Yeah, fine. That's all. So just, I, I hope you take it under consideration. Of course we would. Any other questions on this article? Yeah, if the planning board vote it, approve this. The they language. have not approved it they yet. Approved it. Okay. So we're going to skip over it. The there. next article is just the map, the lot IDs that are right. on the map. We need to. Um, so I don't feel like we need to talk about that beyond what we've already talked about, right? Yep. So the next Other one, I'll just have an explanation. There will be a separate public hearing for the map, but what I believe whatever we vote on on the night of the 8th, the 9th, the 13th, um, will be mimicked in the map. Mm -hmm. This map? Yes. <clears throat> yes. A separate public hearing? Is it yeah. have a separate public hearing. As opposed to? Uh, it's separate from the tourism language, the district language. Yep. The map has to have a separate public hearing. So you you will close your hearing on the and then open the hearing on the map. It won't be done at the same time. It won't be done at the same time, no. same night. No, because the way the genesis of the tourism overlay district didn't include identifying the lots on the map. So uh, council sent us an email and said you've got to add an article and identify this and go through the zoning hearing process. So I reached out to planning board chair as soon as I found out about that and we started working on setting up the hearing for that. So when is the hearing scheduled for that? We're working on it. Before town meeting, I assume. It will yes. be, yes. The day before town meeting or something like that? No, I was hoping for a few days before that, but you never know. We we'll, need, we'll, need need to, we'll need to meet. We'll need to meet to vote on it. Right. I, like so to do that's that. usually why we post meetings to you guys. The map will mirror what we vote on on the 13th for the verbiage right. here. So it's not quite as um, last minute as it seems. Okay. Solar energy, the next one, which also has not been voted on yet, so we're in the same condition where we're just sort of discussing it but not voting on anything right now. We may have questions or comments on this. On, on which? On the solar energy um, zoning bylaw. So we're on page 8 of 19 now. I'll primarily just introduce it that um, at town meeting when we did pass the uh, solar bylaw there was a very strong request certainly from the finance committee as well as the finance board as well as the um, the public that we uh, do something to address small-scale solar since um, the solar bylaws that we passed in June really ad primarily addressed medium and large. And so this is in fact what we've done, primarily with some renumbering, some uh, definitions, changes, and some clarifications. So this whole article 3800 is the rest of the, it, what's here? No. 
correct. That will 3800 will take the place of the uh, current zoning bylaw on solar. And if I can, I'm sorry, I didn't ask for permission. Can I? Go right ahead. Skip. <laughs> so it's my understanding, unless I mean I have not. To be honest with you, I have not read through this, and I will read through it before the public hearing. Uh, but it will be the planning board who makes these decisions, correct? After the public hearing, we will vote on the language of the bylaws that will go to the warrant. And yeah. primarily what we're voting on, as you see in the warrant that you have in front of you right now, I mean, are the are the changes that are in red, and then there we've subsequently had some changes from some other, I and mean, are minor clarifications from um, town council and. As I said, I have not read this, so excuse my ignorance. If uh, in in looking at this, it's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. That someone coming in for a special permit, is there any requirement for special permit? On any of this, section 30, 3800? Right, large, not for, small scale. not for small scale, which is what we're addressing here. Otherwise, we do have some um, special permit requirements for large scale, and um, uh, also certainly if there's any deviation from the regulations, um, medium and yeah, medium and large scale were. Um, were approved at the June meeting mm -hmm. for site plan review for ground mounted solar system. Right. And that's, that's the feeling. same as it was in June. The, the, no only, thing, the only thing that's really changed is that we're, um, this is more specific to uh, small scale Correct, solar right? and the yep. ground mounted and ground mounted, which 660 by right, and same with um, you know roof mounted. And, and large scale and medium scale is not by right, it's by special permit. That's or correct. And, and <coughs> you know, one thing that did come up is that if, if people thought that um, 660 for ground mounted was, you could still do um, solar panels on your roof, so you mm -hmm. can get more. And if someone wanted more than that, then they would have to have a special permit. My, my question was, and, and I think I may have asked this either at town meeting or when we have, was, when, if I want to build a house, I bring a set of plans in and I give them to the building inspector and say, here are my plans. The building inspector goes through, does whatever, whatever the building inspector does and says, okay, you can build your house. And he does that, she does that based on his or her uh, education, background, work, and they have to take a test. So my question is, what special education do the members of the planning board have that give them the, I don't mean the authority, but give you the expertise that you need in order to make these decisions, i.e., why aren't we giving this information to the building inspector and saying, this is your job? Well, certainly the building inspector town council, um, we've got a lot of uh, people in our in our back court who are working with us. So, and, and people on the planning board have significant experience with, in a, in a wide range of areas. So I, I and you know, elected by the town. So um, I believe that we are qualified to be able to judge, I mean, look at any special Permit uh, site plan review that comes to us, not just on on solar. We're right. we're we've been elected and the trust of the. Well, I understand you've been elected. Uh, we don't we don't necessarily know all the answers, but we're good at get, you know. I, I think also that they are to address. We can other, ask other questions. concerns rather than just. Pardon. The I, I think that the planning board is not just here to address the engineering concerns, but exactly. other issues. But that is one of the things that you would be addressing is the engineering concerns. Or and that would certainly. be the building inspector, and that and, and typically you would get peer review if you had something you yeah. didn't know. They would just ask for peer review, as they would with any. Why don't you do that when I want to build a house? Well, building a house is a little little different than you know. You don't need a special permit really. 
typically to build a house. That's probably right. You, right. you understand my point, though. Well, the, I guess I'd also really. say the personnel committee, not everyone on the personnel committee, uh, is a personnel manager. Uh, everyone on the finance committee isn't a former CE, CFO. Uh, so I'm no expert. I'll, I'll just go out. No, and, 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 we, right and we do not make any, you know, you can't come before the finance committee. You can't come before the personnel board. And, and get them to rubber stamp or, or make a decision. Those decisions have to be made in large measure by employees of the town. Why have we carved out this niche for members of the planning board? You may have great expertise right now, but three years from now, you all could be gone. It's in, it's in mass state law. That, you know. Mass state law gives them the right and the power. Question: Did, did you did you ask the, the former members of the planning board the same question about their expertise? Oh, I am a former member of the planning board. Okay, what and I do not have expertise. You qualified to be on the planning board. I to be on the planning board? Yeah. Because I was elected. Well, so were we. Well, that's not that. But you're. I, I don't think you're missing my point. I, my point was: Do you have some expertise? Is there some training that gives you uh, the necessary, I'm going to say, education to make these decisions? As a group, I would say yes. We have members who have been on the planning board for many years. We also do ex, uh, extra education. Casey? Or, go ahead, Casey. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So the planning board's been working with consultants, and that person does have a planning background. So there is some consideration about the expertise in writing bylaws. Um, that does require that the planning board handle those the changes to the bylaws. They are doing it in a vacuum, so to speak. They are running it by staff. They are asking us for comments and questions. And conferring with council and work on so They're trying to be mindful. But as you know, every elected official doesn't come to the table with all the expertise for everything that they do. So they're trying to get it. What I was saying in, in some ways, and I'm going to stop at the end of this. That's why we have a building inspector. That's why we have an electrical inspector. That's why we have all the other inspectors. Uh, that's why we have. We're still involved in the process, right? Well, right. not necessarily. Yeah. Are, okay, would you well, okay? Yeah, would you tell me what specific section you're is inspiring this comment. Uh, site review. Okay. Uh, and and uh, that may not even be on this, but it's it's referenced. That would be 3840 site plan review. Yeah. But you know, I, I'm I'm going to stop because before this is anybody comes to us with site plan review, they've already they've already been working with. Casey, they've been working with Jen, they've been working with the building sector, possibly the Conservation Commission, so it's not like we're making these decisions in a vacuum. And, but the question is why you make the decision, period. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think, think it's, it's, it's their right law. Right it's the law. Think, well, yeah. I, I think what Mr. Olmstead is asking is, is the planning board required to do a site plan review of other types of construction? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. Yes. Well, then Absolutely. they're doing the same That's thing just, then. Yeah. It's yeah. the same. It's right. what they do. <laughs> it was a long time ago. It was most 50 years ago that I was on the planning board. So. Sorry. And you were um, 10. <laughs> you were 10? I was what? I was 10. 10. 10. 10 years old. 6 years old. Okay. No, I was 28 years old when I got on the planning board. Sorry. Um, not that I don't love you people, but I'm tired of talking. <laughs> we, I think we're through. Does it? I, I'm sorry. Does anybody have any other discussions? Any questions on the solar bylaw? In my mention. opinion, I read through it, and it looked to me like my memory of all of the discussion about the solar bylaw last time, and we were all like, "Oh, you got to fix this. You got to fix that." I think you guys fixed everything that I can remember. So I was actually, when I read through it, I was like, "Wow, they did this. Wow, they did that too." And they got the roof height, they got the the feet, the square feet in your backyard thing, you got the, you know, so I, I, I was um, very happy to see that. If 
question, Julie. When did you get this information prior to the meeting? We've had this, uh, we've had this for a week, probably. Okay. We got an advance copy. Last Friday? They have a revised version that where there's an uh, article moved around. Mm -hmm. And we had to add the math article. Right. Right. So, and we made a couple changes in the beginning of the of the course, but okay. it's not it, it's not specifically changed. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you had enough time to review this. What is the meeting twenty seven? Yes. And we will have some minor changes. Oh, that's right. We actually gave comments on the solar. Yeah. But I said to her earlier, I said, well, how do you incorporate it? I can't incorporate it right, because right. we're not at the hearing part. So <laughs> yeah. what I wanted to make sure, and she sent them to Annalise. Yeah. So oh, okay, great. That's yeah. something that I want you to take to your hearing because yeah. they're not huge changes, but they're yeah. thoughtful changes. Yeah. Just like some of the questions that Lisa asked. Yeah. <laughs> Only one comment that I have, and that is that I see the planning board is moving in the right direction, so that's good. Maybe they're not 100 percent, but they're moving in the right direction. I'm glad to see that the town's willing to take this up and consider it. But I can remember being on the personnel committee for two years. We made recommendations for the uh, two town meetings and two special meetings, and the select board said in every case, oh, no, we don't have time for that, so we're not going to cover it this time. I'm glad to see you moving in the right direction because you're listening to people, and that's what's important. Mm -hmm. I, I would just like to reinforce that uh, because I have been sitting in on the meetings, planning board committee meetings and that, and one of my concerns was uh, originally an arbitrary number of 10,000 square feet was thrown out for ground mounted on far right for residential. Only and, <laughs> and so we we got into a discussion. They allowed me to speak at their meeting, and uh, you know they had talked about bringing it from 10,000 square feet to 2,100 square feet. But the more we talked about it, and with the uh, state uh, restrictions and the, the department, state department of utilities on residential allows 10 kilowatt you can produce yeah. and basically that equates to 660 square feet and so the more we discussed it uh they supported that and i give them credit for that yeah. uh, myself as i said in the past uh roof solar majority of roof solar designs look great yeah. i have no problem i'm not you know uh, not against solar energy whatsoever, but the majority of the ground mounts that I have seen, some of those yeah. are left to be a little desirable. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I, I guess we kind of came to a compromise, and I respect that from that committee. Uh, there's some other concerns that I have, but... I can live with the 660 square feet mm -hmm. because I know we, you know, people just say, well, in the backyard, but it's not just in the backyard. It can be 10 feet from a yeah. property line, which could block, you know, neighbors' views and things of that nature, which I was concerned about also. And uh, uh, the other thing that I was concerned about was with the medium size and large scale. If those fall in disarray or disrepair, then the town has a way to go after those yeah. Yeah. and make sure those are taken care of. With <laughs> residential, we don't have that option. So that's what that was the other thing that I was concerned about with the ground mounts. Uh, the roof mounts, if something goes wrong, you're more or less going to have to repair them. With a ground mount, you could actually abandon it and let it sit there and rot, and yeah. could you know could affect property values next door and that. But I was very happy to uh, see, and I thank the planning board for uh, coming to a compromise and be willing to support that 660 square. Feet. So thank you. Well, but just that's why it's so important to have participation from town residents, and we appreciate the fact that you've been so invested in yeah. this. 
Well, and I, I even agreed with you on that. Right. No. Well, I, I, I appreciate it. You know, the good part about it is if it's if somebody's looking for more than the 660 square feet, they can still do it with yep. roof mounts and or they still have the option of going to the planning board and uh, going through a site plan review right. to get additional. If they've got so, bigger property or something. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So thank you. Right on. Cool. Anybody else want to say anything about solar? No. Okay. Um, the last thing, I guess there's two more things on the agenda. One is to pick our next meeting date. Um, you guys have agenda or schedules or whatever available. Um, the other thing, I'm going to take like three minutes and show you this spreadsheet thing um, that I emailed out. Let me see if I can share it. We, we set up our next meeting. I I'd like to say that somewhere along the way, it needs to be in conjunction <laughs> with your hearing. So I just want. Right. Oh, you want to have a meeting at their hearing? <clears throat> after the hearing, so that we can vote this. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure when you're going to do your hearing. That's the 13th. Well, it's the 13th. 13th. So you guys right. can meet on September the 13th. September 13th. And, and Denise, you're going to be able to vote everything on the 13th. Yeah. The think? only thing that may not so be the, uh, so is the uh, map. map. The map. Yeah. The map would be the only thing. But that yeah. will be, but that, so that's, that's, that'll that's be in relative relative right. relative that's relative And we could do that like right before the right. town right. meeting if we needed to. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Better give us a half an hour instead of 15 minutes. I usually used to do half an hour. <laughs> are, we, are we going to see anything other than this yes. at town yes. meeting? Yes. It'll have numbers and stuff on it. talking about is another article I, I'll make this up it says we're, oh, no. we're gonna buy 400 acres of land up in in, in old Deerfield using using all of Skip Olmstead's retirement yeah, funds right. <laughs> gonna do a sound. <laughs> thank you thank you all right so might as well have it as soon as possible after their meeting to give us yeah time. so their meeting is Monday the 13th So yeah, like okay. Wednesday or Thursday that week, does that work? I could do either one. Ooh. At this point, I can do either one. Oh, yeah. Don't you want to have a chance to go away? vote on it first, sign the warrant, and then that way we get the official copy of the warrant? Well, and doesn't have to be posted on the 17th? It has to be, has posted, to be posted on the 17th. So it would be substantially complete once you have the everything that um, and I've already instructed, we have a process laid out to do this after the 13th, 14th. We'll do all of that, get it over to council so they can review it. I would say you may want to wait until the 15th. Yeah. There's nothing to say we can't go into the fall and we can, sir. Well, if we vote the 15th, yeah. then our recommendations get printed on the warrant that right. gets Good posted. Point. Yep. So if you want your recommendations on the warrant, then we would need to vote. I have the financial article recommendations that I can add tomorrow. Um, right. Okay. And so that's one of the reasons we're having the meeting. We need to handle the obligation to settle the So I would at least give us the location. How about Wednesday the 15th, 5 p.m. here? Sounds good. That works. If that works. Does that work for you? Can you get basically have the warrant pretty much ready for the, for the 15th? Well, that's the intent because we don't anticipate a huge number of changes. Yeah. 
Um, I had questions. I sent questions out to council today because there were some things that had come up, and I sent your stuff to you. Um, just people reading through the article. So we're hoping to have it substantially complete. In other words, as clear a language as they voted on the 13th, we're hoping to have it in that warrant on the 14th so the council can look at it. Yeah, and then we'll have it through your 15th. And then we could have whatever she hasn't answered. We'll do the best we can. But that's kind of what we're thinking because we know we have to get things signed by the select board in time to get it posted on the Friday. I've had that conversation with you. So we're thinking we might that. Uh, is that a column then? No, no, not at all. So town meeting is the fourth? Over at the school because we were a little concerned about having enough space. Mm -hmm. So the auditorium is much bigger than here. Normally you have a special here. But we're doing it over at the school to give us a little bit of questions. We know what time are they going to start that? Six. Six. We also have, and I know we've never used it, but it was one of those things that Elementary. I know the uh, the elementary school. We when we built the elementary school. It's one of the things that we discussed. It's true. We've never both, yeah. both the auditorium and the or the Amazing. cafeteria and the Amazing. and the gym. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've already scheduled it. We have when they started when the board started talking about it. I got to discuss that. So we settled on four. So it's not too late in the year if we do have to go outside. Last year was a little chilly. <laughs> oh, um, that was the intent to have a little more space and some flexibility to move things outside. But helping use the auditorium. What were you saying? Oh, spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. Um, I was poking around on that municipal training site and I came across this spreadsheet which is supposed to give you financial indicators of whether your town is healthy financially or not and I thought that sounded appealing to me and I wanted to pursue it. Cool. So I downloaded the spreadsheet. I asked Brenda. She pointed me at all of this beautiful website that has all the data in the world. Um, and so I copied the data for Deerfield into this spreadsheet um, and I just want, I don't want to talk about the whole thing. I just want to show you what's there and we can talk about it maybe next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's just a whole bunch of different um, economic indicators. Each one of these, if you click on it, it'll take you to that page. Um, right here is an explanation of what you should be thinking about, at least they thought when they put that in there. And then all of the data is down here below and there's plots for all of these. So for this example, net operating values, it thinks that your net operating revenue should be sort of monotonically increasing and not wildly banging up or down, um, and we're in good shape from that perspective. Where I got the data is linked right here, so if you click here, that will take you to the website that has the data on it, so you can go and look at, and there's tons and tons more data if you want to look at that and play with it. If you don't, then ignore it. These favorable, marginal, unfavorable, I put that in there. I just made that up mm -hmm. based on what I saw in there. Um, so you can agree or disagree with me and we can talk through it at some point. On each of these pages, if you click, I'm watching that, so just, on this back to dashboard, it'll take you back to the beginning and you can click on any other one. It'll take you to it and you can start I digging through it. Like dropping. I'm on the dashboard. Um, this is great. So Thanks. Sure. I think that's great. Um, there's two of them. This net operating revenues is not really, there's no judgment on it because it's not really filled in. And what I'd like to get here is where the money's coming from. So it's taxes plus, I mean, property taxes plus state aid plus this. Also, I want to include like what we took from free cash and what we took from other pots, mm -hmm. just so that we have a feel mm -hmm. for that is. And this economic growth revenues, I just didn't fill it in because I didn't have the data. Um, and maybe someday I'll have the energy to go find that, but whatever. But other than that, everything is filled in and we should be able to look at it and discuss it. Super great. Um, Love this. But, um, but it's late and we've been talking for a long time. 
question, other yes. items? The data security incident, yes. this does have financial implications in my question. Um, but what if it, the incident happened on March 25th, why do we have to wait to August 25th? Lawyers. To notify, that's, to me that's not acceptable. <coughs> There's a person that might have had my data stolen. Uh, I do have this conversation with the office. That's not there. You get a notice in the mail about the data. We were notified of a possible possibility of an incident, and we're not. Once we were notified, we had to conduct our own forensic investigation utilizing resources from you and the writer, and that is an entire process that is actually mostly predicated by the insurance company. So I realize you might be upset, but now that I've gone through this process, I understand much better why the time is taken. So they do a forensic evaluation of the entire situation and report back to anybody that might be affected. And we have legal obligations that we have to go through a process and evaluate before we can send a The other question is, who's going to pay to for my identity monitoring service. Okay, so that's part of working with the insurance company and the underwriter. Um, the town does carry insurance services. Our deductible is seventy five hundred dollars. Um, this process is probably over twenty thousand. So that's why having the insurance. Um, so we aren't really at the point where we'll have. Something not through. You haven't spent the seventy five hundred yet? Well, we've done the work, we just haven't got the Oh, it's gonna cost the town seventy five hundred. Yeah. Did you hear the part about over twenty thousand dollars? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have cybersecurity insurance. That was yeah. But maybe we ought to look maybe we should look at Springbrook software and say maybe we don't want to use them. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um and this is I had that conversation with one other person. Because you have to conduct business. No, I, yeah, I'm they, not saying, I'm not very, saying just go drop it. They've been very um, worked hard with staff and financial departments to try to help us. They have obligations to their company. This is, we're, we're working under the situation. I think the problem that he's thinking about and that I've Sure, everyone else thought about it, is that the cybersecurity, if your information has been compromised, your reaction window is hours, not months. Unfortunately, you know, if my if someone is you know going to be applying for say loans using my you know using my identity or whatever, that's going to be happening you know fast, not over the course of a year. I understand the concern. But we are obligated to go through a forensic investigation so that we can do as much as, as possible to prevent what happens. And then the, obligation, they have the legal obligations are prescribed to go through a process. I realize that it, it seems but, like it shouldn't make sense, but it does. Well, I mean, I'm sure it makes sense from a legal point of view, of legal avoiding liability on the part of the software company and the town. Point of view, but I think the town people would probably be, you know, would like to know. There's been a, you know, even if it's just a. Why uh, there's a number to call? Because I can't explain to you exactly what every single person who got a letter what happened. Right, but I mean, I think you would prefer to hear about it as soon as it happened. And so we can't tell you until we know what's going on. We have the data yet. Even know what was going on at the point that Springbrook stopped. The, the police can tell me that there's been a break in the neighborhood the before meeting. the person has been arrested and tried. So, I'm not going to answer to that. Um, I'm happy to have a conversation with you offline. I realize people might be upset. I've been in this situation twice myself. So, I get that. But, from the town's perspective, as an entity, we have to investigate and try to discern as clearly as possible what happened. We don't know what happened. We can't tell you. 
You can tell people. Because you don't even know if they got to your But you can tell people they're investigating. And we can't tell you any more than that. And so but you can say we're investigating. Okay, so how would you react to that if you got a phone call from me and said that? Well, who do I call? And how do I find out what happened? Well, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. Can we, can we talk about this at town meeting? Sure. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, it's interesting with all these breaches. When you go to a company that's going to monitor this, what's the first thing they ask for? Your credit card? Your social security, social security number. Right. Yep. Why? You know, I understand why, supposedly, but you would think they'd come up with another system. You take a look at your big three credit companies, and guess what? One of them got breached a couple of years ago so of all their customers with all their information. And it, people may not realize this, but I understand the sensitivity and I understand people's reaction. It happens to each other. And if but anybody figure out why. I have to do what's prescribed by the I'm sorry. I, I, I'm okay. sorry. I'm you, sorry. Do you understand? My, 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 proof, sorry, my, my proofreader brain just, just clicked in. It's prescribed, <laughs> not proscribed. <laughs> proscribed is the opposite. He's doing the minutes from now on. That's it. You're doing the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know why this whole thing happened? Give her the computers. Give her the computers. Yes. <laughs> I kept asking questions, so I found out why it happened. What happened was, I started with your office, yeah. then I went to the town floor, and then I went to the assessor's office. And I said, why would somebody give out my license number? Because I've never given my license number to anybody. Unless they looked it up to see if I was old enough to buy a senior dump from that. That's the only time they would have looked at my license. Now, I finally found out why. The reason that happened was because when they get a report from the state, which has your assessed value for your vehicles, if you didn't own a vehicle, your name wouldn't be on the list. So you have your name, your address, and your license number is the last thing. They have your vehicle number, vehicle ID number, and all that. So what happened was the state put it out, and they put it on a form that didn't need it, and because the state did it, the state should be responsible for this thing. We didn't do it. I never gave my license to nobody. So there's actually four different iterations of that letter. It may not just be driver's And guess what? I turned around and called them because I wanted to see what they had to say. So I got an answering machine. <laughs> no surprise. And then they, somebody talked to me and they said, oh, well, I'm only the answering person for this company. The person from the company will get back to you within 24 hours. It's been at least two or three days. They still haven't called me. Company being Springbrook Software? Yes. Yeah. They, have, not, they, they have, have not called me back. So what I did is I tried to find out why they would have my license number. But you call control too, right? You call so the point is, right? if people want more details and want to, and get specific information, they need to call control. Well, they can't answer that question. I called Pat, but she didn't know nothing about it. I do. I do. It's like, like, why is everybody? My voice so bad. That's what happened. The state put information on there that you don't need to collect. Yeah. Taxes. But, you know, it's funny, and it's, that's their it's, version of an identifier. Well, the other, the other thing is, municipal, was on your license? municipalities mm -hmm. are being targeted. I mean, they are, the ransomware, brutal. It's over 40% now. It's so not going to be the last time. We are, sorry, I wasn't kidding when I said that, um, but I did have to go through a process. And I, we worked as a team in here with uh, the insurance underwriter and council, council that they specializes in this, and try as best we could to define what the issues were so that we can. Can I just ask, can we, can we carry on this conversation after we adjourn? Yeah, we can. Motion right. to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.